Ford has filed a patent. Oh boy, this is a patent. So, and what a patent it is, because what they have done is um, they have made, and they, they're they not saying they're going to make this or that they're going to sell it. It's just, it's the patent right now. But what they are saying is that they have, uh, it's quoted as, it's being titled as, quote, systems and methods to repossess a vehicle. And that is what it was uh, listed as, as the patent. And it goes on to say um, that it, quote, can disable a functionality of one or more components of the vehicle remotely. And that includes things from the engine to more pedantic stuff, like maybe the air conditioning or the heater or something like that. They say it can also, quote, move the vehicle if the vehicle is equipped with um, uh, partial self-driving or anything like that. They say, quote, it can move the vehicle from a first spot to a second spot that is more convenient for a tow truck to tow the vehicle, move the vehicle away from the premise of the owner to a location such as, for example, the premise of a repossession agency, end quote. So um, basically, and what they have in their patent, they have a nice little diagram that shows the lending institution communicates to Ford server, Ford server communicates to the car, and then the car drives itself out of your driveway and to the repo guy. And now, the obvious thing here is pay your car payment and this won't be a problem, but I I have some other th- issues with this. I have some, I think there are inherently some, uh, some issues with uh, privacy and security of this, and uh, part of this is, I mean, this is the dystopian future of self-driving cars in many ways. And, you know, look at it this way. Again, you know, you might say, well, I pay my car payment, this isn't going to matter. Well, what if the lending institution, what if your bank, Errantly, what if they make a mistake? What if they make a mistake, ping ping server the servers at Ford, and then your truck drives away, and you don't have it when you need it? And what if you need it in, a, in an emergency? What if all these different things, they go, oh, sorry, that was a mistake. Uh, here's your truck back. Well, it doesn't matter. They deprived you of your truck without due cause, without due, you know, without, without going through the due process uh, for this. So uh, now that's a far-fetched scenario, but it's one that it is technically possible, and you have to consider that when you look at the, you know, ethics of systems like this. And um, and I think it's really spooky. I think it's really spooky that Ford is doing this, personally. I think it's very strange. And I mean, I'm not even a fan of cars that do over-the-air updates by themselves. Like, I mean, really, I, I don't want the auto manufacturer, once I buy the car, I want the auto manufacturer to do nothing with it except for when I take it to the dealer. And seeing as how I don't buy cars from dealerships or cars that the dealer ever wants to see, that's not usually an issue for me. But if I did, uh, the only time I want the manufacturer doing something to it is if I take it to them. And and that's just, when you look at the car, even if you have a loan on it and you know, say you're paying the loan, yes, your bank, you have a lien against it. But for all practical purposes, you know, and for the use of it, you are still as the owner entitled to the use of the vehicle. And, uh, you know, again, I was it's like, yeah, sure. As long as you're paying your payment, but I still think that that's, there's too much room for interpretation here. There's too much room for error here as well. That could affect, uh, otherwise, you know, law abiding, regular people and people who are abiding by the contract of their, their lien or whatever. You know, I think there's, there's a little too much, uh, here that you could, that could go wrong. And here's, here's where it gets a little weirder though. Um, because it gets, it gets worse. It gets worse because in some cases, according to this, uh, they say, quote, the vehicle can be semi, uh, autonomous and the repossession system computer may cooperate with the vehicle computer in semi autonomous mode to autonomously move the vehicle. As they said, for the first spot to the second spot, but here's where it gets even nuttier because, um, if the lending institution who has the lien on the vehicle decides that the vehicle is not actually worth the money to go out of their way and have the repossession agency repossess it, have it drive itself to the repossession agency. If they say this car is a pile, it's not worth their time, and they're just going to get a couple hundred bucks out of it to try to fulfill some part of the loan or whatever, um, they say that the vehicle can even be programmed to drive itself to the junkyard. Imagine a future where when your car just becomes so cheap and decrepit that it just drives itself to the junkyard. You know, some people might say that would be a good thing for me because I kind of have this habit of hoarding cars that cost, you know, pennies on the dollar. But 
Um, imagine that your car could just decide one day it's not worth enough money and drive itself to the junkyard. Now that said, if it's capable of driving itself to the junkyard, um, it's probably in good shape still. I would hope it's in good shape. I don't even want to know what's going to happen 10, 15 years down the line when we have these semi-autonomous vehicles that just, um, uh, that, that are now wearing and tearing that are now in states of disrepair. Uh, how are these autonomous vehicles going to behave when they haven't been maintained very well? Um, because that's going to happen. I mean, that's just going to happen. You, you're not going to expect this car to be in perfect mechanical condition for its entire existence. Um, so that's a that's a topic we may um, we may tackle on another on another show. Just uh, just kind of a uh, you know just just sort of a thought experiment. What would happen? You know. Um, so anyway, we've you know what? we've got a lot of other stuff to get to here. There's so much more that I have on the show here. And um, and we've got OBD1 Kenobi, Mechanic Brian. He is going to be joining me uh, coming up here in the now fourth half of the show. I'm getting used to the whole new four segments thing. We're getting, we're getting there. Brian's going to join me here. We're going to tackle a listener question right after this break. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 